What's going on guys? Thanks for tuning in this video. I'm Nash and in this video we're gonna break down the total cost analysis of what it costed me to start my RV park. But first, make sure to like this video and subscribe so we can get off to a good start. All right guys, so first I just wanna say thanks so much for watching. I just wanna put it out there that I'm not an expert, I'm not a guru. I'm still learning as I go, but I'm just sharing my experience with you so hopefully it can help some of you guys. A couple of you commented down below saying you wanted to see the total cost breakdown and everything that it took for me to get it started. So I'm going to go through that. And I just want to say, though, thank you so much for watching. It's really very encouraging to see all the positive comments, and it makes me motivated to keep going with this, okay? So first things first, we're going to break down kind of the basic levels of infrastructure and how much they cost it, just kind of a general overview so you can get an idea. And I also want to say that I bought my property outside of city limits. So if you buy your property in city limits, if you're watching this and you're trying to start an RV park, if you buy it in city limits, typically it has public utilities that are accessible. My property did not. It was a raw piece of land. It had nothing on it. So I had to start everything from scratch. So if you're doing that, you're going to get a, some good insight here um, and we'll just go through it. So um, if you, as you can see, these are my, my total costs for everything. I'm going to go through one by one each, uh, sp each individual part of infrastructure. So the first major part of infrastructure is obviously the land. So I bought my land with a $13,000 down payment. The market price was $85,000. I did what's called owner financing, which just means you put a down payment followed by monthly payments. It's not with a bank. It's just from the seller and the owner or the seller and the buyer rather and there's no bank involved. If you wanna see how to use owner financing, watch this video here. We're not gonna to get to it in this video, but I put a $13,000 down payment. I now pay $620 a month, and that gave me access to the land right away. So that was one of the bigger parts of infrastructure was the fact that I needed $13,000 down. Okay, so moving on to the next part of infrastructure is gonna be the septic. Now the septic was definitely the biggest part of infrastructure throughout this whole project. Now that costed me $38,000 and that's definitely going to be your biggest hurdle. Uh, but first things first, which I didn't put on here because it's not part of the major infrastructure is a septic engineer. Now a septic engineer is needed in order to get a septic done. You have to first have it mapped out and sent to the county. So uh, the septic engineer can be anywhere from $1,000 to maybe $10,000. We only paid $1,000, however, that was a mistake because he took very long to get it done. He took a very long time, so keep that in mind. Are you going for time or money? Uh, for us, it took us a very long time to get those revisions back from him, so keep that in mind. But essentially, once we got the revisions back from him and it was submitted and everything, the septic installer came out, so you gotta get uh, septic bids. Septic installer came out. Uh, it took about seven to eight months for him to get everything done, and it costed $38 thousand dollars and that was definitely a huge part of the infrastructure uh, but it's necessary you can't do it without a septic so we got an aerobic system there's a couple different kinds but aerobic system is what we got and it cost us thirty eight thousand dollars the next part of infrastructure i'm going to skip roads because the roads are the last thing you do you can't you got to do the septic first the electric the water and then you do the road because the road's got to be covered after everything's done so the next part was the where is it the electricity now we used uh, just electric poles. We work with a electrical co-op and I think we put in three electric poles. Each one is around $1,500. You also have to run the private side. Um, so you gotta get you know, all the wiring and everything and you gotta put it to each spot and you gotta do, you know, you gotta trench everything for that. Um, we hired an electrician who charged us a very cheap rate. It was a family friend. He only charged us $14 an hour, but if you hire somebody that's you know just in the marketplace, it could be anywhere from 30 to 40, depends, but we only got it done for $14 an hour, which was very cheap. Uh, so if you have the connection, that helps. Uh, but pretty much what you gotta do is you gotta have the you know electric company come out and put the electric poles in, and then you can hire somebody to do it, or you can do it yourself. You can lay all the electric on the private side to each spot. And then also too, you gotta have the hookups, the electrical hook hookups, so either a 30 amp or a 50 amp um, hookup or both, what we chose to do was we mapped out every spot that was gonna either be 30 amp or 50 amp. That way we didn't have to spend extra money on getting dual 30 and 50. Instead, we could just save a little bit of money because it's you know a couple hundred dollars extra to get both. Uh, so we figured we might as well, because that times you know 14 spots, which is what we have right now, 
14 spots, that adds up. So we just decided, hey, this is gonna be 30, 30 lot, bleh, sorry. This is gonna be a 30 amp spot. This is gonna be a 50 amp spot. And we saved money doing that. So electric roughly though was around $10,000. And uh, I think we kind of pinched pennies in a way, but you could pay a little bit more, but that's what we paid for our electric. Next up is the water. Now the water was very cheap. Uh, it only cost us $2,000. And we did an alternative type of water system that is not typically what you'll see at an RV park. So a lot of people starting off, um, there's a couple different wells you could get. Most people, most people get wells. You can get a residential well, which in Texas, surfaces up to 14 spots or 15 spots before it's required you need to get a commercial well but when you get the commercial well you have to do away with the residential well so we figured you know why do that because the thing is a residential well is going to cost anywhere from 20 to twenty-five thousand dollars, which was just not in our budget and so we just said hey let's look for some alternative routes and what we did actually because in texas technically the water is not regulated until it's at least 15 spots or more which is why you need a commercial well and we said, well, let's just save money. So we bought a water tank, which was 6,000 gallons. It was a used water tank. It came from an oil rig in Texas that, um, I don't know, I guess it uh, watered, you know, the, the people that were working out there, it watered their housing, uh, the RVers. And so we bought it off of uh, somebody for, I think it was thirteen or $1,500. And that was a great find for us. Um, we had this huge water tank, 6,000 gallon water tank. And then we brought a pressurizer for roughly $500 um, to just kind of even out the water pressure throughout the RV park. And it worked great. And uh, obviously we needed all the piping um, to go to every single spot that would get, you know, all, plus the, the water spigots for every spot. But in total, it came out to about $2,000. And what we do now is we just get a 500 gallon tote. We put it on the back of our truck. And every couple of days we go into the town and we fill up with the municipal water. It's roughly $22 for every 8,000 gallons, which is nothing. So we don't really spend a lot of money on water and we just truck it in. It can be a hassle, but right now, just in the short term, uh, it's working out for us. Eventually we're gonna get a commercial well, but if you're somebody thinking about saving a lot of money, a water tank can be a great option, especially if you have close access to municipal water. And we only spent $2,000 on our water system, so not bad. And the last part of infrastructure, the last cost was the roads. Now the roads cost us roughly $3,000. What we did to get the roads done was we used the caliche. We have caliche on our property, which was excavated when the septic installer put in the septic. He put it in a certain designated spot on our property. We hired, or uh, I'm sorry, we, we rented out some heavy equipment and we pretty much paved all the roads with caliche and then covered them with crushed granite. All in all, it came out to about $3,000. You could do it yourself. It's pretty easy. A lot more cheaper than asphalt, that's for sure. It is a little bit louder when you're driving, but it works for us. And it kind of gives that woodsy feel that we want. We also bought some rubber hexagon squares that we put before we laid the crushed granite for spots that were more sloped. That way the rain wouldn't push out all the crushed granite. That maybe cost us a couple hundred dollars um, for that. Uh, we got about, I don't know, maybe 10 to 20 feet of that. And I don't, I forget the name, but I would, I would say the name, but I can't remember what it is. Uh, but all in all, it cost us about $3,000 for the roads. And all in all, this whole process for the RV park took about $65,000 to get up and started from nothing, which is pretty good. Now we have 14 renters on our property. We're doing about $7,700, which is not bad. And I just wanted to break down kind of the basics of infrastructure so you can get an idea if you're starting one. If you wanna see in more detail how much money an RV park makes and how much it could make, watch this video to the side here. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe if you wanna see more RV park videos like this. And if you have any questions, comment them down below. I'd love to help. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day, guys.